What is going on, everybody? We're doing something a little bit different on the Press Start Select podcast tonight. We're going to do a little uh, anime-focused segment. It is, once again, Antonius the Gamer, joined by my two co-hosts, Mikkel Smith and Super SSS Rank. Fellas, thank you for joining me for another uh, special episode. And in this particular episode, we decided to make this a uh, multi-part series. All right, we've been mm-hmm. having a, a couple of uh, group chat discussions that we feel like deserve, that are like pod-worthy material, to be honest. And, you know, S rank has brought up a couple of times, like we, we need to pot about these type of things. We need to bring these type of topics to the masses. And, uh, and I agree. And Tim agreed as well. So we figured why not start with the the anime that that brought us all together as 90s kinfolk and kid folk. Right. The Toonami era, the 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 the, the entrance drug, as you will, <laughs> when it comes to anime in America, Dragon Ball Z. Now, uh, for this series, we're going to go through the entire lineage of the Dragon Ball Z movies, including the most recent one, uh, Dragon Ball Super Superhero. Uh, we're going to be breaking these up into um, three movies per pod, right? So you guys have enough breakdown on each movie per segment. That way you guys can uh, have something to look forward to for the next week's episode. And I figure why waste time? Let's go ahead and get started with movie one, Dragon Ball Z, The Dead Zone. Now... It's crazy because as I was looking up photos for this, I realized that like we forget like how long it took for Japanese movies to come to America. And this movie came out the year I was born. So I'm like, yo, I'm sitting here rewatching a movie that is 35 years old and it looks That's beautiful. Crazy. <laughs> I'm like, yo, you want to talk about the power of animation? I'm like, this movie looks beautiful. Um, but basically, the plot is it takes place early, early, early Dragon Ball Z. I'm talking about pre um, Saiyan invasion. So this is before Vegeta and Nappa. This is before Goku even dies fighting Raditz. And the plot synopsis essentially is Garlic Jr., who we assume is a demon. Right? It's never really specifically said. We assume it's a demon. is coming to get revenge on Kami on behalf of his father. And uh, him and his, his henchmen go looking for the Dragon Balls. They're able to find all of them um, through unknown means. They kidnap <laughs> Gohan right, and uh, t- basically attack Chi-Chi and Ox King. Uh, Goku goes on the journey to rescue Gohan. Piccolo shows up. Krillin shows up. Kami shows up. Um, Garlic Jr. gets his wish. He's one of he is one of two Dragon Ball villains to actually achieve immortality. Um, and then goes on a, you know, typical kung fu action and they're able to banish him to the dead zone that he creates with the help of gohan now fellas what was your thoughts about the plot first of all like what do you guys think about the the premise of this story um overall it was a very straightforward damsel in distress type of uh situation which you gotta understand because that's literally like this was the literally the bridge between Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z. Mm-hmm. So this is technically the beginning of Dragon Ball Z here. Yes. When you really sure. look at it. So like, especially if you never really watched like Dragon Ball, there are just certain things that are flying over your head. Like the relationship between Goku and Piccolo. Mm-hmm. It's like, yes, like, you know, I'm still trying to kill you, fam. <laughs> actively. <laughs> I'm still trying to actively kill you because you killed my father. Mm-hmm. And then even um, the relationship with Kami, like, you know, you got some hints about Kami's past. And like, but was this the past when him and Piccolo were one? Or mm. was this when he ascended to become the guardian of the earth? You don't know. But it's still the fact of the matter is, I mean, I did enjoy to get more about Kami's past. Mm-hmm. And, you know, yes, it was very interesting to see a villain like, well, he's already wished for immortality, so what can you really do? Yeah. But then, you know, of course, you know, as Kisuke Uruhara said, like, well, I can't kill you. I, the most I can do is seal you. Mm-hmm. And then that's exactly what happened. He, it was logical sense. He sealed himself by accident. Yeah. Um, The plot was great, man. I, I, gave the, I give the plot like a genuine 8 out of 10. Okay. And I do that because of, you know, the story premises is a very pinnacle moment. It doesn't add too much that alters anything out of the way to make it say like, oh, this doesn't make sense. This doesn't stick. This doesn't line up. Like, it's perfectly in alignment. Mm-hmm. Bro, we've gotten some of the, the best fighting choreography from this era. It's like, bro, like this yeah. was an era where it was still about hands and technique 
with a beam every once in a while. Like the fact that Goku was still using his power pole yeah. <laughs> and his techniques, bro. It was like, yes, this all makes sense. And then you know what I I really appreciate, bro? Mm. No color palettes. True. None. This is pre Kao Ken even. So there's no, yes. there's no transformations really outside of Garlic Jr. and his people. Like there no one is powering up to do anything. It's just it's, it's either you get dense. bulky or you get fast. And that's it. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah, yeah. Uh, S. Frank, what do you think about the the plot before we uh, deep dive into the everything else? Oh, the plot. Well, I think the plot plots like simple plots like that make Dragon Ball Z better. I I, I think you know mm. people gotta like just play to your strengths. You know, simple plots like that make Dragon Ball Z better because the uh, characters are already colorful. So you have mm. like the perfect recipe almost. Like mm-hmm. you look at you know let, look at the John Wick series at the first one was a simple story, and it turned yeah. into what it is. You know those things worked for those type of films, uh, for those type of stories, action adventure. Um, so I thought the plot was fine. Um, the villain actually got he actually won, got his wish. <laughs> yeah. You know, so this know. was this is for me as a kid seeing that. Whew, get the defibrillator, defibrillators, man, because I was like I was losing. I said, what is Goku gonna do? That's yeah. it. Even it's if you over. Win, you can't win. I turned yeah. the turned the Vegeta <laughs> man. Vegeta, see him Broly, dog. It was a wrap. But um, mm. yeah. As far as plot, perfect, perfect plot. Um, uh, you know, you know me. You know, I got the Sharing Gun when it comes to animation. So, um, that was the most refreshing drops of visine you could ever get, man. Mm-hmm. The the villains were they weren't cheap. The fact that Goku had to use his power pole and that the, the dudes, my, that, that's one of my favorite scenes, man. Um, I remember watching, uh, you know how Toonami would show. Um, the little clip intro. Yeah, and, and yeah. you just didn't know where this clip was from because I, I, like, I never saw it in Dragon Ball Z. And so mm. I finally see Dead Zone and I get my reward because that choreography where Goku had to dodge the blades when those two henchmen summoned the swords out of their thighs yeah. that were made out of their bone. <laughs> I was like, this is, I've never seen anything like that before. Those were very interesting villains. Mm-hmm. They were, their designs weren't the best, but like they They're had. pretty simple. Yeah. But. Yeah. But it was, it was still, it was still, um, it was still great. Mm. I think you know what I gar- even, um, enjoyed about them? I enjoyed their names, Ginger, Nikki, and Sancho. Yeah. Like it was very lighthearted. Um, and so apparently I did some research. You know, Garlic Jr.'s race is called the M- Makian, like, you know, how to make your star. So apparently, whatever a Makian is, that's what they are. Mm. Okay. I mean, it makes sense. Like, I don't, I don't think he'd be a demon because uh, it's just, it's, I just assume that because, like, during the movie, like, he's like, when he opens a dead zone, he was like, all these people come raise hell, da da da. So I'm like, is he English, is transla- he? English translation? You're bro. probably that's, right. That's yeah. what that is. Pro- pure but then some English of it, translation. But some of it's not, right? So, like, even to Tim's point about the henchmen's names, it's like, apparently, like, that's actually some of their names in Japanese. Like, them screaming out, like, gingerbread and da da. It's like, that's really what they said in Japanese. Yeah, like, that's, that's, uh, you that's know, how everyone had, like, the naming convention of, like, garlic and ginger yeah. and spice and da 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 da. But yeah, that's what you were saying about this overall story. Yeah, the overall story was perfect. Um, I mm. think the choreography, man, was refreshing. Um, those were some of the best fights and best finishes that weren't cheap. They were earned. Yeah. Earned is, finishes. Yeah. True. I think some of the movies later earned, on, it's like, yeah. what? Yeah. Well, <laughs> all right. Yeah. That happened. But it was an earned finish. Krillin was useful. Mm. Krillin was useful in the movie. Master Roshi, you feel me? He was, I don't know if he was in this movie. Nah, I he was. He was. No, he wasn't. Okay, he wasn't in this. But um, I'm getting it mixed up. But yeah, man, they were like useful. Goku using the power bo- pole to destruct this being a problem, as like a problem. Yeah, like yo, Krillin. I don't think you need no other technique. This Krillin is didn't it. really do much in this movie, bro. He all he was he was the glorified babysitter and the comedy relief. He didn't fight. Oh, that's that's the other movie. I'm mixing yeah. it up. Okay. Yeah, you're skipping the head. Yeah. Okay, okay, I'm skipping ahead. But okay. Um Piccolo. Piccolo mm. the Goku team up was was dope. Um how they beat Garlic Jr. The stakes were high. The stakes were extremely high. Mm. Um and it felt I felt the pressure, like, yo, y'all boys, 
y'all got to defeat this man in the Yeezys real quick. Mm-hmm. You feel me? The Yeezy phone posits on his feet. Y'all got to defeat him real <laughs> quick, dog. So, so, uh, yeah, that was it, man. I think the chore- um, the choreography, hand to hand combat, it had Dragon Ball Z never lost that. I feel like they would have been, they would have been top tier. And Naruto yeah. would have never taken their spot for choreography. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. Yeah. I think for me, I, I, I'm with Tim. I think the plot overall is like an 8 out of 10. Like, there's a couple of small things. I'm like, this is a little weird. Like, the whole little subplot with them, like, kidnapping Gohan, it didn't really make sense. Like, why don't you just take the Dragon Ball off his hat? Like, you don't have you don't have to take Gohan with you. And then it's just like, oh, yeah, like, now Garlic Jr. wants to take him as a potential future henchman. It's like, why? Why? Why this child out of everybody? But you know, like I, that was a little weird to me. Let me. But I, 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 think I know, like a lot of these movies were influenced by like this series, so it was like it was very reminiscent of Raditz taking go on. So are you gonna say? Uh, yeah, I, I think I think it. I think well, they are their names are already Ginger and Spice and Garlic June. So it, like something whimsical like that happening for me wouldn't be a stretch. Like I, I don't know if they were intending for that to be a, a comical part. Like, hey, you know what? You'll be my henchman. Yeah, it's yeah, it's that's, intended that's, as comedy because there's that whole thing where like Gohan eats the apple that apparently is full of alcohol and he's like running around the halls drunk, which is just like again, this is just so <laughs> yeah, no. random. Yeah, right? it, it, yeah, it, it, it just didn't translate to you know different audiences. Probably, yeah, it probably was hilarious in Japan, but right, like here's this poor girl like, who's who's eating. A drunken apple who's hallucinating about dinosaurs, <laughs> like we're all running around a capsule. I think the reason the why they took yeah. Gohan was because when you look at it, remember I said it goes back to the it being the bridge. After the world tournament, who were the strongest fighters? It was Goku and it was Piccolo. Hmm. So if you're using a plot to attack Kami, which you know Piccolo is going to get in involved by default, mm-hmm. you well, remember they the jumped in the beginning dragon. of the movie. Yeah, and then they jumped Piccolo. <laughs> And, and of course, and of course, Whoa. one of the Dragon Balls is, you know, in Goku's family's possession. So it's kind of like, yes, anything with the Dragon Balls, Goku's going to get involved anyway. So mm-hmm. I think taking Gohan as a hostage was some, supposed to be some form of collateral. I guess that's, that's my adult mind thinking about mm-hmm. it now. Mm-hmm. But it was, it was straightforward, man. And, you know, it was like a lot of, you could tell like a lot of this stuff was like subtle hints about what would go on in the anime because now you find out that this kid has some hidden potential. Yeah, that's a and, everybody. And of course, you know, you saw it again when he head-butted Raditz. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So let's let's get into the uh, the actual villains of this movie. We spoke about it a little bit in our like plot synopsis, but, you know, we have Garlic Jr., his three henchmen. Um, as Frank mentioned it earlier about, like, they they play a huge part in the choreography. Um, it's not one of those things where, you know, because it's such a limited cast of heroes, it's like it's not weird to see Goku and Piccolo kind of take them out first before fighting Garlic Jr. But what do you guys think about like Garlic Jr. being the villain, the way he's presented, his motivation? Uh, just tell me what you guys think about like just the characters overall. He was definitely like a spoiled brat, like a mm-hmm. spoiled brat that you could tell he inherited something, but he's not. I would say coherent enough. Like he's just blinded by rage and power. Mm-hmm. Like, and then of course, you know, he has some underlings. The underlings were very, very good with me. Like the fact that bro, like they had very weapon based combat. Like everything mm-hmm. was not like, yes, they had beams, but that's like a more of a last resort. Like when dudes, when they came at Goku at two, at, on both ends, it's like, yes, bro, Goku had to dodge that, bro. There's no, Super Saiyan Trunks that he blocks the the sword like no go <laughs> right your head this could have got t- taken off bro <laughs> <laughs> your head could have got taken off bro so you had yeah. to be you had to be so like calculate your movements and no one to all right you have to understand is that this is not a tournament and that's where I also understood Goku's adult mind like no this is not a tournament these are dudes who are going to kill me mm-hmm. so when I get a chance I need to take them out yeah yeah so and then he did. The moment when he had that one dude in the rubble, he's like, ah, man, and they just took him out because they, cause they, they understand the stakes. And that's why like, I kind of felt like DBZ kind of lost. It's like, what happened to Goku who understood the stakes? Like, mm. when did things become like, oh, you can change? I know you can change. Like, no, 
No. Yeah, this man is beyond reforming. You got to kill him. <laughs> There's no <Wait>. other way. <laughs> yeah. No, I agree. I agree. Um, For me, I feel like with the villains, like I think after rewatching it recently, I was like, I can see why they decided to bring back Garlic Jr. for that filler arc. In the, in the main timeline I'm like this is a the template here like it's it's a template for a good idea right? he's an original character he doesn't really copy off anybody like i don't i can't think of any other dbz movie villain that like our, our dbz villain period that like he resembles in any way he's very original and i feel like sure. just the fact that like like you guys both said like the weapons based combat the fact that like god of Juno really plays off the fact of like you know, don't judge by appearances or things are bigger than they may seem type thing. Like, I really like that, that, uh, you know, that difference that he gains when he like essentially goes Hulk, <laughs> right? Like goes Hulk and like, it just becomes an immovable object. Even the fact that him and Kami were throwing hands, it's like, bro, when's the last time you see, saw Kami do anything in any of these, you know, these franchises since Dragon Ball. So it, it, yeah. I think like they just, they fit in a way that just feels very organic to the movie like it's just one of those things where i'm like man it's a perfect marriage of setting and villain and like uh, uh motivation and just even technique like he doesn't do much but like to your point s rank of like yo he's already got an immortality what can you do <laughs> you know like even when they mm-hmm. team up to beat him take off the weighted clothes and all that stuff it's like he gets right back up because he can't die it's just like man like i just it was good. I have I ten out of ten. <laughs> you know, like no complaints in terms of like Garlic Jr. Uh yep. you have any thoughts on the villains overall or Yeah, he he was he was the Emperor he was what I thought Emperor Pilaf should have been. Mm. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like uh Garlic Jr., I thought that was Emperor Pilaf. Um and, you Fair. know, my child mm. mind, but they mm. they took turned out to be completely different people. Yeah, I thought that would uh, that's what F- Emperor Pilaf should have been. You know, um he should have been he should have went from the whimsical, okay, I'm not taking you guys serious to, yeah, I finally got what I wanted. And to me, that's what I was expecting, but I found out they were completely different people. Yeah. So in my mind, I'm thinking they're the same guy. I'm like, yo, he changed, man. That's great story to him. But no, that's not what happened. But um, I think Garlic Jr. is an interest. He brings an interesting dynamic to Dragon Ball Z. Mm-hmm. Because when you looked at the filler, um, those were some of the interesting concepts and villains. I mean, say what you saw. I know a lot of people didn't like that filler. I didn't mind it. The one filler where Vegeta was actually the hero. Um, yeah, it, a lot of the execution for it was just always a problem. Like, the, the, like so the ideas were good, right? The yeah. black water mist thing where everyone's like corrupted. I'm like, this is a yeah. good idea. Very good. Yeah, uh, everything else about it was not the greatest, but it's just like, yeah. <laughs> in, in principle, it works. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. I think uh, with with Garlic Junior, Garlic Junior is probably the top top uh, top. One, he he's top five DBZ villains from the movie series easily. Mm. Um, there's no no discussion. Even his henchmen is up there. Yeah. So a lot of good concepts that I kind of hope they pull from if if uh, in the future. And that's all they had to do to kind of rescue Dragon Ball Z in the state that it's in. But um, we we've come up with plots that were interesting. We're like, oh, that didn't make sense, but you know, yeah. Um, yeah, he's he's definitely a villain I would love to see become canon. You know? Even yeah. the setting. Um, I was like, bro, where is this demonic looking castle in their Ooh, world? Because no. like, <laughs> like one thing about Dragon Ball, I would definitely give them this Dragon Ball. They visited a lot of very unique environments, bro. Mm-hmm. Like when they fought that little um, mafia guy, Month the Carrot, I got, um, I think that oh, was yeah, his name. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like, bro, where are they? Even when they <laughs> met Yamcha in the Wasteland, like all these areas that they met, I kind of feel like when they count, when they got deep into Dragon Ball Z, it was always Goku's house, some either West City, East City, the islands, mm-hmm. the Arctic, and that's it. Oh yeah, oh, oh, yeah and the some, rocky region. Yeah, the bear, yeah, some bear. And it's like, bro, side. come on. It's like, so we're just like, like all these environments just got so generic, bro. Like, mm. and that's why I really enjoyed it. It's like, bro, they are literally like in some devil may cry looking castle. Mm hmm. Having having a fight, Dragon yeah. Ball Z style Devil May Cry Castle, yeah, Perfect. yeah, beautiful. Looked and exactly then, like Toriyama drew it. Yeah, and then in terms of like the utilization of Goku, Gohan, Piccolo, and even Krillin, how do you guys feel like their roles fit for this movie, or it didn't fit? Um, you can tell Gohan, like I said, damsel in distress. 
Krillin is that always that one friend who just shows up because like he was still passionate about the action mm. um, at that point. And then you know, but the main the main characters was Goku and Piccolo because when you really understand how that tournament ended, it's like it makes sense that it's just focus about them and it was kind of like preluding to what the major first arc of the anime was about yeah it was a it was a battle to the death versus goku's family and they Mm. were the main characters yeah no i agree with you i I think like again outside of the whole kidnapping go on thing i think the the thing that pulls them all together makes perfect sense like it's not one of those things where it's like this person just showed up out of nowhere as we start to see in future movies down the road where it's like what why would they have not been here from like the like immediately, right? <laughs> it's like everything in this is like okay, like you said, like it makes sense why Krillin would show up for this. It makes sense that like Piccolo would want his lick back, you know, after getting jumped in the beginning of the movie, and also protecting Kami's in his best interests, right? So like it makes sense for them to like show up for this like common thing, and yeah, I just again like it's one of those movies where like every time I watch it, I was like, I can't believe that things actually to some degree get worse from here because it's just it's so like well put together like i, yeah. I have very minimal complaints about the movie um, we gotta you know, look of course, at who put that movie together man for sure for sure yeah. and the thing is like that's crazy it's like to tim's point earlier it's like you know when you're a kid like yes you're like wowed by the idea of super saiyan and transformations and things like that but like as an adult or like as you get older and you appreciate choreography right it's just like I don't. I didn't even need all the razzle dazzle to be like. This is just a well put kung fu movie that just happens to have blasts every now and then. You know, like it just, it just. You like you said, you can put it on for your kids and be like, look, just enjoy peak cinema. <laughs> that looks that still looks beautiful. <laughs> yep. 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 Yeah. So final rating for Dead Zone out of ten. What are we giving it? I give eight, it an eight. eight. Yeah, that's eight. that's good. That's a good one. Okay. Eight out of ten. It's a 9 out of 10 for me. Um, it's probably in my top five of the original Dragon Ball Z movies towards the top. I just, I again, I don't think there's much wrong with it. I think it excels in a lot of ways. Oh, that was my other question. Is there anything you guys would have changed or would have liked to have seen in the movie that wasn't present? Um, To be honest, I w- not really, because when I thought about it, I was thinking about like Yamcha and Tien, like where was their presence in it? But then what I really look at it, bro, is like the amount of villains that, like, yes, you had Garlic Jr. and his three henchmen. I was like, yeah, you know what, to be honest, I did like the fact that it was mostly a Go- Go- um, Piccolo and Goku type of showdown. Because mm-hmm. it's like, you don't want to bring too much clutter, I would say. Right. Bring too much clutter. And it kind of ref- that kind of reflected over into the next movie as well. Because mm-hmm. to be honest, when you really look at it, it was the same amount of villains. And yeah. one big boss, technically. Mm. It yeah. wasn't until like the Tree of Might where there was enough characters on screen that everybody could just get involved. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So no no real change. That's right. Any changes you would have made to the Dead Zone movie? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm the British. Actually, that's just... actually, sorry to cut you off, bro. I will say this. I wanted more backstory about Kami and Garlic, Garlic's father. I want to know what was the real basis of their battle and what actually happened to him. And to because re- they really give more like fuel behind Garlic Jr.'s ambitions. I felt like we should have gained more of that story. Even when he came in the filler, it's like you just it was just, oh, I'm here for my revenge. And yeah, five episodes later. He's still laughing. He's right back. Yeah. 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 My birthright. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty much it. Mm. Mm. Uh yeah, for me, um, I think I think Garlic Jr. should have had a weapon. I would have I would have liked the um the consistency of weaponry. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, okay, because I saw what these guys could do. I was expecting, you know, okay, yo, what if Garlic Jr. weapon looked crazy versus just turning into, you know, uh, Hulk. the, 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 yeah. n- the Mulk, the Mulk, Namek Hulk or whatever homie is. Mm. Yeah, because, you know, like, that's, that, that it, it didn't even get to, he wasn't even using, to, he was just, rah, you know what I'm saying? Like, he just trucking people. So it wasn't yeah. even, it wasn't <laughs> even on home. <laughs> 
and and then Garlic Jr. seems to be a very you know logical. Uh, I wanted to see some of his 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 mind. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't. He seems spoiled, but he seems to have a little form of, uh, ability of technique. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you there was it's. I guess to Tim's point, like I think that's that is a, a flaw in terms of like we don't really know what fueled him. I mean, yeah. we know that he was like smart enough to be the point like you know, where like Connery's about to kill himself. He's like, if you can blow yourself up if you want, I'm already immortal. So this changes nothing. To you be know, honest, like like Garlic Jr. really reminds me of a lot of like remember when they when they did the Dragon Ball um super movie when they show when Frieza came to Planet Vegeta. It's been hinted at many times that, you know, especially since aliens age differently, that Frieza is technically probably a child or a teenager in his race. So, mm-hmm. like, cause, like, you could tell, like, by how his mannerism, especially, like, when they got deeper into Cooler's dialogue, you started to see, like, yes, he might actually be a child mm-hmm. or a teenager. Because Cooler used to say, like, oh, you little spoiled brat. Like you don't even know what you're doing. Um, like you, you, you leave too much room for error, type of things. And like he's thinking like a child, a mm-hmm. child who has so much power at his fingertips. Even when, when he came back as Golden Freezer, he hated the fact of Goku. You made me train for this. Mm-hmm. I don't need to train. Mm-hmm. I am, this is I supposed to be like naturally supposed to be the strongest. Like literally throwing a tantrum in his own mm-hmm. way. Mm-hmm. So like, and that's what I kind of felt like from Garlic Junior. Like Garlic Junior. Whatever you know, the Mekian it M- M- Mekian is, mm. he's probably a child in his race. Like no, he no, he's mm. short because he's a child. Mm. He's short because he's a child, and of course, you know, for transformation perks, especially back in that day, we just made things bigger. Here's the Hulk. Yeah, have a have a good time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you know, I and a lot of things. I thought he was a dark dynamic. To be honest with you, that's another thing I forgot to say. I thought because he looked him and Kami. I thought that was like a dark race of Namekians. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, because the way they 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 don't look that far off, and if the fact that him and Kami, the silhouette of his father looks just like a, he dresses almost like a Namekian. Yeah, it was the silhouette. It was, yeah, the silhouette. it was the silhouette. Yes. So I'm mm-hmm. thinking, okay, um, where's this? I'm, that's really what I thought it was. They were just like more vicious, uh, form of Namekians and and whatnot. But um, that was never um. Uh, expounded on or even mentioned so that's okay. probably i would have probably made that obvious like they would i would have probably made it like oh, okay they're dark namekians they're evil namekians and they 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 you know they feud because of this and that why and that's why they fought hmm. oh i just i just uh, remember the reason why kami and garlic senior fought was it was to be the for the throne of the guardian of the earth. Yeah, to be so Kami. They were, they were the two people, and I guess it was a battle to the death. So then, he has to be a Namek, right? No, it wasn't no. about it wasn't a battle to the death. It it when he's recapping his father's story, um, the previous guardian chooses Kami. The father tries to kill them both, and then he's banished and dies. They, oh. didn't, they didn't fight over the the godhood. Kami oh, was chosen. <laughs> Yeah, hey. and then and then in his revolt he was killed. Oh, so he tried to be Yojiro. Yeah. <laughs> All, so, right. All right, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like I, I think it's a fair critique of like I do think they could have done a little bit more to expound Garlic Jr.'s character. Granted, again, this is nineteen eighty nine Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball hasn't always we haven't started getting death in Dragon Ball until like recently. So you know, it's one of those things where I'm like, that's a, but it is a fair critique of like, we could have probably gotten a little bit more of like what fuels him as a person besides like, I want revenge for my dad and this earth is rightfully my birthright because my dad should have been picked, you know, but to me, I mean, again, like I'm biased in the sense of like, I, this is one of my favorite Dragon Ball movies. So no, you're, I, you're, you're not, not wrong. Much man. That I, yeah. There's not much I have to personally critique other than the, like, you could have left Gohan right where he was <laughs> and just dipped. And Goku just goes after them anyway because you beat up his gra- his father in law and his wife. <laughs> he comes back and they're crumpled on the floor. I'm like that's enough motivation. And you know, if I pull up and my family's beat up on the lawn, I'm you know, like I'm. You know, to hey. be honest, that is true because it 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 could have probably opened up a more opportunity for Goku and Piccolo to like yes enemies of like enemies technically at that era to come up with an attack to defeat him, to seal him. 
mm. in some way. And then, you know, to be honest, I could have even expanded on more of a Piccolo's, you know, Namekian magic. Or yeah, because like, we, we know he knows the Mafuba, the little ceiling wave attack that was used on his dad. Like, so it's not like they needed Gohan to win, technically. Yeah. Call him Master Roshi for a favor. Hey, can you do your little hand wave and uh, put him in the rice cooker? I mean, but, te- <laughs> no, but technically that comes at the cost of your life. That's true. That's but true. You're right. it got technically retconned. Like everything else. Come on now. Like I said, Tim, we didn't start getting deaf till like 2015, bro. <laughs> everything else was just like, it just it just works. You know? Like, and then it was just like, oh, here's all this lore and da, 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 the Grand Kai tree and da, 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 like but uh, yeah, so Dead Zone. Uh, moving on to the second movie, which dropped a year later, The World's Strongest. Now, The World's Strongest, um, you know, when I was rewatching it and trying to think, because you know, again, a lot of these DBZ movies just draw from a lot of the the continuity for inspiration. I feel like Doctor Wheeler was also another one of those. Like, I don't really think they they didn't draw from too much for his character. Like, nothing about this. <laughs> tracks with like what was happening in Dragon Ball Z at the time right like granted some of the fighting is definitely reminiscent right some of his bio warriors is literally just a palette swap of a Cyberman like let's just call it for what it is um but in terms of just like this idea of you know again the Dragon Balls are involved they wish Dr. Willow out of the ice uh he's looking to he's just a brain at this point because his body passed away so his assistant's trying to find him a body when he was last alive, Master Roshi was the strongest, so they assume that he's the one that they should take his body. They end up being wrong. It ends up being Goku. Gohan, Piccolo, Krillin get involved. Yada, yada, yada. Fight, 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 fight. You know, Goku ends up with a spirit bomb. That's the synopsis in a nutshell. And essentially, the Z fighters fight a giant mech, which is, again, something that you don't really see in this series very often. Um... There's, again, in the fight scenes, is, there's a lot of inspiration drawn for sure from the Saiyan Saga at that point. I mean, Goku beats Dr. Willow with a times four Kaoken Kamehameha, literally shot for shot from what he's using as Vegeta. He yeah, uses a spirit um, bomb. Because <laughs> like, technically, since the movies are technically their own universe, they take like reference points. Mm-hmm. So technically, this movie was like after the Saiyan saga, like after they defeated Vegeta, but yes. before Goku goes to Namek, or yeah. if he went to Namek. Yeah, before any of them go to Namek, honestly. Yeah. But then, of course, you know about the story, you know, how does that really work? But then that's why people are saying you got to take each movie as canon ish. But yeah. not. Right. Because then at that point, the loophole would be like all of this tracks in terms of who's still alive. But in that case, Piccolo should be dead. Yes. <laughs> and he's in the movie. He should be dead. <laughs> he died at Nappa's hand. So it's like, yeah, Krillin Gohan makes sense. But I'm like, Piccolo should should have should have died. And even yeah. if this is pre dynamic So, you know, like every DBZ movie, I think, except for Bojack and Harutagarn. All have like that one Bojack, or two things. Bojack, Kurudagon, and and Dead Zone. Basically, they're the only ones who fit. True. The only thing with Dead Zone that's like kind of kind of breaks the canon is that Krillin is the one that rescues Gohan, and it's like, how would you rescue this kid and not know that he's Goku's son? That's the only thing I was like, mm, maybe, maybe, maybe. And I'm like, I'm willing to say that maybe, you know, Krillin oh, was... yes, because he didn't met, meet Gohan. He didn't meet Gohan. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah. So I'm like, wow. Mm. He doesn't say, he didn't tell Krillin, hey, go rescue my son. But I'm like, I'm sure at some point Krillin would be like, who is this kid that I just risked my life for? Like, oh, that's my son. You know? And so like the fact that I'm like, that's slight little like inconsistency. Okay. All right. So I know I get your point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but. Yeah, but so for for the uh, the world's strongest, what do you guys think about the overall plot, synopsis, how everything plays out, and so forth? Um, to be honest, I give this one and plot a seven. I gave it okay. a seven. Like, yeah, like it was interesting to see. Like, all right, so who is this crazy doctor? Um, and you know, you wish this doctor out of some like was it like a red ribbon army connection or is it something from Ma- and then this is where I kind of feel like the missed opportunities was 
Because um, one thing I liked about King Piccolo's um, saga was you saw more Master Roshi's past with his master. Because mm, when mm. him and um, Tien's master, when they all grew up together. So I'm thinking like, all right, if this character thought Roshi was the champion. That means he's from that era. Yeah. But then where's the backstory? And you see and like a rival to Dr. Briefs. Like what's the, you know, like yeah. what's the, yeah. And that's where I kind of felt like that was, that was a very missed opportunity to give us some more connections. Like, and I get it, you know. Yeah, because actually, yeah, you know what? You're right. Because this man was big into cybernetics, which Dr. Brief was as well. And of course, you know, this is pre-Dr. Jero, so you don't really know about his character yet because he wasn't even really mentioned like that in the Red Ribbon Army. Right. So I'm thinking like, all right, this is another rival doctor. And then, you know, but then the thing about it is you need to bring this stuff forward because imagine if these, you know, bio mutants or whatever, these were like templates for like androids for the red ribbon army mm. or for something for soldiers be cool. because yeah. one dude has like electric whips one has like this frost beam the other mm. one ha- is a, basically a, um, a rubber man yeah yeah <laughs> and it's, it's like and like, like and they all got these weird japanese names and like I, I i even looked them up i couldn't even pronounce them bro. i was like <laughs> never mind uh, so yeah, like I, I do feel like they kind of dropped the ball with backstory. It was just more for flashiness. Like the choreography was great. Um, the Anyone. Master Roshi scene when he's like, "Bro, have you ever watched that fight in slow motion?" He I is haven't actually. Ha- like, bro, you gotta slow that down. It's like the way he's moving is like he literally clips one one of the dudes with his foot, and you see the dude on like. Huh? Mm. And it's it's amazing, bro. And it goes to show you, bro. Like, and this is what I like when they brought back Roshi. It's like, bro, Roshi is still a, a competent fighter, bro. Yeah, yeah. He is not this helpless old man as y'all think he is. Like, mm. this man is like, I would say on the equivalent of the third Okagi. Like, he knows a lot of techniques. Yeah, to disarm you. Because like even what they showed in Fighter Z and what they showed in the tournament when he fought Goku, if you even try to jump up in the air next to me, oh Thunder Shot to survive. Mm. Yeah, it's it's. I, I said in the group chat before we uh, got into this, I was like, like I, I really feel like whoever thought to put Mass Roshi in the movie deserved a raise. They deserved a raise. I'm like, it, it's a it's a great reminder, especially post Saiyan Saga. Of like, yo, Mass Roshi used to be that dude, yo. He used to be that dude. Like there was a reason why his name rang bells across the world. Like he he was he was the one. He was him. You know. It's, it's, so it's like again, it's 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 still like a symbolic passing of the torch. Like yes, did I expect Master Roshi to defeat the Bio Warriors? No, I didn't. But the fight scene was great, right? Do I appreciate the fact that he tries to jump in and fight Doctor Willow with the rest of them? Of course, of course. Who doesn't want to see Master Roshi, Krillin, and Goku do a Kamehameha together? That's fire. I, how can I, you know what I'm saying? I can't be mad at that. Sure, he's useless, but it's fine. You know, like, it's just like this, the fact that you guys thought to like, yo, Master Roshi plays a central part in this plot. You know, I just, I, I, I really appreciated that part of it. Um, but s what were your thoughts on um, the, the uh, World's Strongest movie? Um... I remember watching the world's strongest. Um, I thought Piccolo being mind controlled was cool. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was like, that was to me, that made Dr. Willow a threat in different ways I haven't seen before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? He was an ally at that point. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I thought that was fire. And then um, I kind of wish there was more of that going on with the bands being trying to mind control. You know, like if you're gonna do that, you might as well keep going after everybody else that that um showed up. Mm, okay. Um, they should have kept that. Should have been probably like, oh, if if all of Goku's friends are are controlled, then what are you gonna do, Goku? Mm, how mm. are you gonna How are you gonna get yourself at? What if Master Roshi fell to the the mind control? Now you got Piccolo and Master Roshi. Effort, what you just saw as a problem. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Dan Krillin too, and you gotta deal with the destructo day. Like I thought that would have made stakes a lot higher. Um just that's only me after becoming an adult and watching it, of course. I hate it. And I didn't understand. I'm like, yo, why is his brain so huge? If 
Yeah. If 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 he's human, like yeah. dog, what is what? And then his body's gone. So like, why is his brain a giant brain? And if y'all could make this, y'all couldn't make him a body for temporary. You, you know what I'm saying? Until like it's typical until, Japanese fashion of go big. Like, yeah, go especially big in that with time. Mechs. Yeah, you know, it, it's yeah, because bro, because honestly, bro, what two mech shows was peak around that age? Gundam Wing, Robotech. True. True, true, true. It's it, it yeah. Um, it, it was the climate of the time, bro. Ugh, it was. It, yeah, I hated that design, man. And then that design, that design makes me hate Giroud from Dragon Ball Z GT because that's all I saw. Fair. I mean, to, to as much as funny, the irony in it is like as much as you critique uh, heroes as Frank, I'm like that's one of the things they did fix. They gave Doctor Will a little body in that in that continuity. He gets a whole. He actually gets a body. So you know, like your your Wait, critiques are valid. Doctor Wheelow's body. I've yeah. never seen Doctor Wheelow. <laughs> he actually gets a body. They give him a body. Uh, How so, do you spell you know, his name? Uh, just Wheel. Wheel. Oh, <laughs> literally, Doctor Wheelow. Uh, I'll see if I can bring it up. But um, yeah. Um, was that the, really the only thing that you had? Like you just didn't like his uh, design? Um, Did you like everything the, else? The, the villains were cool. The, the villains were fire. I think the stakes could have been higher. Um, it, yeah, the design, the design killed it for me. Like there was this era where I don't know if it was Japanese. Uh, like the hero only looks cool. The villain don't really look all that fire. The villain looks like hog. Like it looks. It reminds me. <laughs> Of the the dragons from Dragon Ball Z GT, that golden dragon, just oh, that's Doctor Willow's body. Mm-hmm. So so what they did was they they turned Doctor Robotnik, I mean Doctor um Light, not Light man, what's the Doctor Wily, and then they put him in Dragon Ball Z. That's I mean, all yeah. I saw. Yeah, well, okay, they gave him a body. <laughs> like, they they gave turned him, him to a cyborg. All right, yeah, right, okay, that's <laughs> that's what I w- that's what I didn't understand. I'm like like yo. So his brain is that huge, and his brain don't even look like a human being's brain. And also, <laughs> like my thing about it is, what was his obsession of, you know, taking the world's brightest mind and putting it in the world's strongest um, martial artist? But like, what was your reasonings for that? What happened in the past that to say I wanted Roshi's body? That's true. That is, yeah, we don't really it it. It makes sense in the premise of like it, it's a way to get the heroes involved, but when you think about it, I'm like, but why would you? Why would you, like? I get the whole principle what, what, of what like is this from. That's also from Dragon Ball Heroes. That's his his true form. It's a regular sized brain in his cyborg body. Wow. Well, they yeah. fixed that. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> they fixed that. Not everything in there was great, but I'm like, you, you got it. Every now and then, there was a good idea. Of like, no, steal this. Wow. <laughs> Bring this into the continuity, please. <laughs> okay. No complaints now. Yeah, yeah, but um, that that's pretty much it. I mean, the villains were cool. I like the setting. It was um, to be honest oh, with you, yeah, yeah. I, no, no, but I, it was good, done well. It was done it was. well to be to be honest with you. Even go with well. the henchman, where it's like you know he's stronger, but he's like I'm so cold I can't concentrate, so he's he can't like fight them off the way he, you know he can. I'm like, yeah, I, I like this whole like, what do you do when I'm like Yo, I'm, you're freezing. Yeah, and yeah, they right. you. <laughs> Stuff matter, but not Goku can be in the vacuum of space, so you know. Yeah, and hey. then now you're in this. Um, the base that they were in, it was interesting, but I was like, why is it so empty? Like, so you mean to tell me this is this massive fortress, but there's only like three to four people in here? Yeah, you would think and he'd have more henchmen. Yeah, like for sure. That, that's you would, another you would thing. Right? There would have been an army of those bio warriors, like. Mm. So it's just three, it's just them, like okay. And even if it was just them, but like, where's the rest of your staff, or where's the 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 place that made these guys? Well, and where are you from? Are you Red Ribbon Army? Or are you like you were saying? Like, because to me, that stuff is frustrating, man. You got all like he just he, so Doctor um not talk to Willow, but the Red Ribbon Army scientist Jero didn't have any idea of this man if such he was the smartest guy. Well, then, see, but remember, this is pre-Android Saga. So, remember, Dr. Jiro wasn't really mentioned like that in, yeah. in Dragon Even Ball. Even in Dragon Ball, they didn't acknowledge mm. him. No, it was more about, around. like, Commander Red, Assistant Black, and those type of guys. Who was so, actually like, Black, right? Well, so, no, Commander Black was Black. Yeah. Because... <laughs> what? Yeah. 
But go ahead. <laughs> yeah. So it it, it, it was kind of like, yeah, we didn't really know about the Android as of yet. So it was basically saying like, all right, so yes, you know, you pick this character, you know, he's a rival of Dr. Brief, but it's just like, okay, so you have this facility, which um, his assistant, who's an Android as well. Mm. Where's Dr. Brief or, from? Or a cyborg. Um, Where's Dr. Brief from? Yeah, that's Bomber's dad. That oh, Bomber's dad. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. I'm like, is yeah, that Bomber's dad or is the guy from yeah. um, Caroli? Uh, oh no, 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 no. Okay, okay. okay. I don't know, know, know what that guy's name is. Somebody talking about a, re- a real age slump. Slump. Father. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Slump. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Oh, no, Doctor. Okay, Doctor Brees' rival. Man, Capsule Corp got problems. Boy, everybody hate him. Why, yeah. You would. So, Why wouldn't you? <laughs> so like, so what the the cyborg dude makes a wish to like you know for the internal dragon to like because I the the fortress was like sealed in some ice like that, frozen he, over, that, he yeah. could, that he couldn't dig out. Hmm. So the the yes the facility is unfrozen you know it's free from the ice but then like I said it's just like everything is like in this hibernative state like there's these three warriors inside and just him and this brain in this wall but I'm just like so that's it like there's nothing else in this place I would have thought like it would have been like an assembly line for like you know, bio warriors or something like that. Like, hey, you know, I'm creating these warriors and, you know, I want to get military contracts or something like that. And that's what I say, bro, there's so much more that could have been added to this story, but it's just, mm. he's just a character who just wanted X, Y, Z. Okay. Well, I feel like we kind of covered the henchman and villain in the same thing of the synopsis. Um, how do you guys feel about the utilization of the heroes? Like, I know for me personally, I feel like Gohan and Krillin weren't as effective in this movie. No. Personally. Like the they fact were, that like they get jumped by the electric henchman, I'm like, bro, you guys can't do anything. They were they were the Goten and Trunks before Goten and Trunks. Like they show up, yes, in a very fashionable way, mm-hmm. but they're going to mess up. Yeah, like it was just cause like, you know, you have the whole like beautiful, like Goku versus my control Piccolo rematch, and there's a lot. I mean, top, like top tier choreography between those two of them throwing hands. You know, we already mentioned the whole Master Roshi thing. But I'm like, go on and Krillin. Just, they don't really. I mean, yeah, they kind of contribute towards the end, but not re- like they just they're just kind of there. You know, and then, like Goku has to rescue them after they try to rescue him, and it's like, why y'all? Why'd you even bother? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, but you, why, but you why, know, why sometimes you that's just typical writing, bro. Like, you know, sometimes they just fumble the characters for comic relief of the main hero. Hmm. And we've seen where that has taken us as of now. Yeah. A whole lot of they've had to course correct many times now that they, now that they were like Goku Goku time for 30 straight years. And I was like, oh wait, people like other characters too. We forgot. Oh no, oh no, oh no, no, no. Off screen power up, off screen power up. Quick, 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 quick. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I mean, you know, everything in terms of that, like go on, pick, uh, sorry, go on, Krillin were and eh. Piccolo, I think, was used great in this movie. Um, there's like these really cool scenes towards the end where they're like they're chasing Wheelo into space and like just like a constantly bombarding him with attacks and like Piccolo's leading the charge. And I was like, this is just, yeah, it just I remember, great. I remember Piccolo like, like came up in his face and he did the mouth blast on the Yeah, on the, bro. On the brain like, yeah. Yeah, I was like, man, like it just the, the scenes, like the cinematography in that was like really, really cool. Um, even Dr. Willow's shooting down a Goku for, like, with the bullets from space. And, like a lot of it looked really, really cool. You know, again, it goes back to that same thing we always say about like that hand drawn animation era, like nothing like it, yo. Nothing like it. It was just top t- when it was top tier, it was top tier here yeah yeah it, you know, it so. had a lot of that person was in their mixtape bag like yeah what? okay <laughs> yep. you draw this man that was drawing dog yeah uh-huh. so i guess i would say what i mean i guess tim you kind of said that you would want more dr willow backstory is there anything else you guys would change to the movie yeah i don't think we briefly no, said it no hmm. max no, no max. max yeah no like you could have given him a suit but like the whole Mac idea was a bit much for me, because even when I played him in Tenkaichi, I was like, "Bro, he's the most boring giant out of all of them." Okay, and it, okay, like here's another thing, right? If you're gonna pull from that era, wouldn't it made sense for you to 
make a mech that looked like it was inspired by the times versus this thing that you drew one time in the concept art <laughs> during the concept art meetings uh, yeah this is our character well you drew him one time one time right. okay because like yeah because like even when on um, commander black when he had his mech i was like you know what this kind of makes sense he's an ordinary man he's trying to kill this little boy Who's, who's been murdering everybody? Yeah. So he just gets, <laughs> he throws out that little capsule corp cap, gets in the mech. Let's go. Yeah. yeah. So, and, and that's why I kind of felt like this one was like, all right, so you mean to tell me this is a guy that predates that, but he has this overkill looking mechanism and it's just like, okay. Yeah. And to S Ring's point, it's like, it makes even less sense because it's like, why did, how did your brain get so big to fit this? How did this work? Like what? Because like they show a little flashback of like his assistant putting his brain in the machine. It's like it's a regular sized brain. Like when did it become like this mega brain? And why was this the design that you guys agreed upon? Like this is it. This is my go to body. Yeah, like, and that's like, like yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what and then that's what kind of made it a seven to me because I I couldn't get over the fact like this was this was trash design though. Mm. Like this is a trash design, man. And then, and, yeah, what's the point of having a tail? Like, you know, like who knows? And it's, and it's like, <laughs> I'm looking at Met, this whole Met thing. Kaiju culture, bro. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's one of those things where it's like you can't knock them for trying something different, but it just didn't work, right? Like, I think ultimately, it's like, like I, I, I applaud y'all for thinking outside the box, but also no, like, no, this is not. We will not be going down the history of like, yo, Dr. Willow, he was one of them ones. <laughs> you know, it's like, no, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> he, he, he was not, man. He was not like, um, and then, I, and I, I'm pretty sure they fought something similar, like, similar like that in GT. That's what really made me really hate him even more. Well, I mean, like, you know, GT was just at no, that point. No, but it, it's was... like, it's like, I'm like, yo, I hate this design. I really hate this design. Did you go back? I really, really hate this design because it's not even drawn with like creativity or interest. Yeah. And um, I just I thought I thought he should have had some psychic powers. I thought that would have been cool. Since he, he does have smartest. psychic powers. He does. Yes. There's two scenes in the know. movie. One where Gohan's getting mad that Piccolo is being controlled, and he uses psychic powers to blow Gohan's feet under from underneath him. And then when he frees himself, Piccolo tries to jump him and he holds him in place with telekinesis. He has psychic powers. So watch the movie again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I probably yeah. should have. <laughs> yeah, sorry. sorry yeah, he um, has psychic yeah. powers. <laughs> yeah, okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Oh, well, that means I was thinking correctly, man. But yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel me? Um, I think that should that would have made more sense, man, with with uh with with that uh those two, those minor changes, and um, I liked the fact that Goku was in a different environment, but like him being cold to stop you, but like you just, fin- you know what I'm saying? Like yo, you was just fighting, you was just fighting. Like, why would this affect you now? Like you different, man. You different, different now. You know what I'm saying? Oh my gosh, it's cold. I'm like, yeah, but what? Blasts, key blasts don't bother you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Let's like. I just, I think like it's one of those things where I like it because otherwise, in the back of your mind, you think to yourself, nothing Goku's doing right now matters because we know he's stronger. Versus, we already know he's stronger. He's just not able to muster that strength to win outright in this scenario. Right. Where it's like, you know, you know, like by like, that time period, like he's gonna face off against a big boss regardless. But I'm like, man, I didn't expect him to like struggle like this, knowing he yeah. just fought Vegeta. You could, you <laughs> could have fought. Yeah, you could have made different ways. But you know, that's just me nitpicking. It's not really that big of a deal. Mm. It happened. It is what it is. Okay. Um. So that- and, but you know, yeah, that's it. Ah, uh, that's a flat seven. Okay. Tell me what you give out. Yeah, a flat seven. Okay. It was enjoyable. It's like something you'll put on just for the sake of it, but then the overall like would I care about this moving further? No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm in I, I'll probably give it a seven also. Like I think it still has a lot of good ideas. Again, the whole mass roshi thing I think was a breath of fresh air. But a lot of it 
a lot of it is just the same saga with like less results. Like, let's be for real. Like Goku versus Wheelow is not as compelling as Goku versus Vegeta. It just not. It just isn't. It like I don't care what you do with the Kawa Cannon. Like it doesn't. It doesn't matter. It's not the same thing as Gally Gun versus Kamen. Uh, it just call it what it is. But it's cool, right? And again, a very original idea for that time. But moving on to uh, original ideas and uh, trying to take inspiration. You know, we got the original Goku Black in uh, <laughs> movie three, The Tree of Might. Now, the Tree of Might, as those who have watched the original Dragon Ball series know, the plot is there is a group of, I'm assuming, space pirates. It's never really officially cleared up how they all kind of banded together. But let's just go with space pirates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, So they were with Frieza. They defected. Mm -hmm. And because they defected now, you know, Turles was like, yo, let me build up my own army to contend. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that makes know? sense. I, I can yeah. I can get with that. I would explain how they got the scouters. Um, mm-hmm. You know, so they they're space pirates. They come across by, you know, Tim's point about like backstory. We don't know how they come across these seeds, but they come across the seeds for a god tree called the Tree of Might. Um, they decide to plant it in Earth. It starts sucking the earth dry rapidly, right? You see the wildlife dying within hours. <laughs> within hours, just deer's collapsing, fish falling back into the you know, like going uh, belly side up in the in the rivers. And Goku and and to, to the movie's credit, the entire Z fighters, including Chao Tzu, show up to try to uproot the tree. Um, they're unable to. Turles crew shows up. Everybody has a, a show of fisticuffs. Eventually, Turles, looking a lot like Goku, shows up, gets Gohan to turn into a giant ape. Piccolo shows up. Goku cuts off Gohan's tail. Goku and Turles square off. He's beating Turles. Turles eats the Tree of Might, bodies everyone for the next 20 minutes straight. And then Goku is able to defeat Turles by actually absorbing the energy from the tree to make a spirit bomb in a Clint Eastwood literal standoff <laughs> and blow Turles with the tree. And saving everybody. So, overall, what did you guys think of The Tree of Might as a movie? As a movie, um, I gave it another eight. Um, my only drawback was, you know, like, and I and I and I like you for the original comment. Like that is the original Goku block. Mm-hmm. Um, from design to just everything, bro. My only thing was, you mean you couldn't like narrow down. One of the probably the biggest mysteries. What is his connection to Goku? Because he knows him by Kakarot. Mm-hmm. So like, is he a cousin? Is he an uncle? Like, and I'm pretty sure. Like, hey, yes, you know, we, we haven't gotten the story of Bardock and the father of Goku yet, but at least we know about Raditz. Like, you could have mentioned something, mm-hmm. something. Um, especially where the series was going, because is um this is technically, um, I would say. I think this is after Namek. Still Technically, not after it's 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 another what if before Namek. I would say yeah, but I guess if they didn't die, yeah, 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 pretty much. Yeah, okay, okay, so that's cool. So it's technically like another Saiyan invasion type ish. Okay, mm-hmm. so I get that. Um, yeah, you could have mentioned something, bro. You could have mentioned something that that could have explained their connection because that is still the running mystery to this day. Like you, you showed us Goku's mother before you even explain who Turles is. <laughs> like, and I just kind of felt like, bro, that was such a missed opportunity, man. Cause you could tell like at this point they were trying to really give more like subtle hints before, like of Goku's lineage, but it kind of felt like after Namek, everything was just more about the super Saiyan versus the Saiyan. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, can you tell us more about Saiyan culture? Like, you know, even with them, like, yes, you know, they probably defected from Frieza's army. They became mercenaries, just like that group who was kind of based off like Bojack's crew in the manga, the super manga. Mm-hmm. It was, it's the same story. Mm-hmm. It's the same story. They were part of the Frieza force. The heaters. They, the they heaters. Just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They defected and they just do their own thing. The, the black, know, they, still, they still have access people. to the technology. And what I like the fact about it is there's there's other like Frieza Force members with them. Like you got a plethora of aliens. Mm. You got this one Rakum looking character. 
And you could tell it was kind of like Gang You Force is, but not a fanatic. thousand percent, bro. Oh you my had this one goodness. guy who could split into two. You had well, no, they're, side... they're, two, they're two brothers. Yeah. Well, they sack on an Ugon. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then you had this one cyborg guy, and then you had this other Jace looking Australia, Carl Urban looking character. <laughs> and... He does look like Carl Urban low key, though. <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> Yeah, he really so, does. Like he really does. Uh, Carl honestly, Urban bro, in his like, <laughs> like it was. It was a well needed, uh, and I was glad. It's like yes, finally a movie that does not have only four villains. Like so, like you was able to get everybody involved. What I did not like about the story was is the Z fighters they lost against the henchmen. I kind of felt like that should have been the homage to Dragon Ball that. Yes, Goku and Piccolo are probably the main characters as of now. But <laughs> this could have been a moment for you to really showcase like these boys still could throw hands. Because that's one thing that Dragon Ball really showed, bro. Like Yamcha in his own way is a is a trickster mm-hmm. with his techniques and he's very very fast like his movements. And then even when he started to bring in more energy-based attacks with the spirit ball and things of that nature, Tien is basically the Neji of that of that world <laughs> in terms of discipline and technique. You know, Chaozu is right there. Remember, Chaozu knows telekinesis and all this other stuff. Gohan is Gohan. Krillin, you know, that was Krillin in his peak, I would say. Yeah. That was I, that was I Krillin, agree. bro. Like Krillin, mm. Krillin was literally like the bag of all tricks that you never knew what he was gonna do. Like even like like when he fought the Cybermen. And it was like, oh, what Krillin's going to do? And he's like, oh, he's just going to shoot a beam? Nope. Beam turns into seven beams and obliterates half the Cybermen in one go. Yeah. He takes them all out himself. (laughs) Yeah. And then, you know, of course, the solar flare and just, it's just, there's just so much more that they could have done. And I didn't like how they they were defeated by the henchmen to go back to Goku, be main character, and he just one-shots them all after a KO can power up. Mm-hmm. And then even the part where Piccolo came in, I did like that. Like he came in later, and of yeah. course, you know the battle between him and Turles did not go well. I was like, "Yo, the man, <laughs> both times. a special bean cannon <laughs> with his, the palm of his hand." Both times, <laughs> he I got was like, up. <laughs> "He got dude just got bodied, bro." And it, I mean, it was very interesting. I, and I also love the stage, man. I, I tell people, bro, the Tree of Might, that stage is one of the peak designs, bro. It's like, it's like, bro, like this is the end of the world mm-hmm. type of end game type mm-hmm. scenario. Mm-hmm. Um, like, to be honest, if Dragon Ball Z was a very short series, you could have ended it with that. Like the world heals after Bit just almost being obliterated of all of its life, you know? Fair. Um, Gohan going on a rampage. Like I just loved how Turles did it because it kind of did feel like an uncle taunting his nephew. Like, like little boy, open up your eyes, <laughs> open up your eyes and see the truth. <laughs> Come see. It. <laughs> and it's like that, and that's why it's like. So who is this character? Mm. Who is this person? But that's yeah, fair. like I, I, I gave it, a, I give it another solid eight, man. Like it had some real good peak moments, and to be honest, this was the last time we got choreography, and everything after that was just beams, beams. Yep. Enjoy the fighting while you can, because yeah, you're right. It doesn't. I mean, it it exists, but not really. No. After this, yeah, no. yeah. As Frank, what do you think about uh the Tree of Might? The Tree of Might is one of my favorite Dragon Ball Z movies. Okay. Um, uh, for um, me, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna give you an essay right now, man. So y'all boys get ready, saddle up. Okay, number one, the the stakes and the setting. Giant tree. A giant tree that's gonna absorb the earth. This the tree felt evil. Right, it felt menacing, and the trade-off is: I'm the tree's absorbing the entire planet's power, and it's turning it into a fruit, and there's many fruits. So, what's the lore of this tree? Where is this tree from? And why did Turnus have to come to Earth for it to be effective? Mm. That's one. Not necessarily, because they did mention they go from planet to planet to do that. Oh, 
So he, but then, but my geez. thing about it is, what was the connection? That oh yes, we finally found Kakarot. But who is Kakarot to you? Mm. Yeah, that okay. part. Mm. Mm. All right. So now you have that part right. And for me, Turles was t- like I didn't like I was never a fan of the Goku Black because it just like yo, why didn't you just use Turles? He's right here. Mm-hmm. He's already written. He's already better. His lore is better. Mm-hmm. He's Goku. If Goku did, if Goku hit his head, that's right. exactly that's the that's whole exactly, premise of his character. Yeah, that's the whole premise of his character. His design is fire. And who are these other guys with him? Are they Saiyans too? I mean, I don't think so. No, I mean, I yeah. mean, what I did what explain did you- that they're they're aliens from yeah. Like yeah, you got one, two looking humanoid looking ones, but yeah. So it's like I yeah. hated that. I hated that because it's like yo, how, how like yeah. The reason why I hated that because it was just like it's dumb. It's like yo, just make them sayings. What are the chances? No, of them- no, because like bro, all right. When you because especially since we were really getting introduced to the Frieza Force at that time, it does make sense. Like here is a mercenary. Not guy. all of them, just those two guys. It would make more sense for me. If I was gonna, if I was gonna have a coup d'état, or like, yo, it would make sense for me to find my three closest friends, and it's it's just the same theme that I saw with Vegeta, Raditz, and pick um Vegeta, Raditz, and Nappa. So I'm like, okay, so this also his saying buddy colleagues that he's close with. That's, that's what I thought. That's why I was like, yo, this this doesn't make any sense. That makes right? it, that does make sense. That's a logical reasoning. I think it was also just like you don't want to. I mean. <laughs> To be fair, there are a couple movies that that run very close, but I think maybe they saw some of the critique. Again, we're just spitballing; right? we have no idea. But they saw some of the critique of like them literally doing Control C V with with the Tree of Might with Goku using the Kaiba Can. Like, let's not just rehash the Saiyan Saga on camera. That's yeah. my thought. Okay, of like and why Trellis was just the one. Okay, and even with that, okay, at least make them boys unique enough in and like poly pigmentation. And I would have been, I would have been okay. I would have been okay. But them other aliens, when I say I felt that I love the design, the cinematography, listen, that, that to me is a, that's one of my favorite uh, groups in Dragon Ball Z of villains besides the Ginyu Force. You know what I'm mm. saying? Cause they were, they were dope, man. The, you had the cyborg. He had the missiles that came out of his shoulders. Like what's the lore behind this guy? This guy was going, he didn't care. He, you didn't, to me, it made me like, yo, you could be like a robot organism and you could give a saying it's work. You mm. know what I'm saying? You could give these people work. Then you had the twins that were doing their little technique. Like, so they were mm. deadly together. Then you had the, um, the, 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 I don't know what character that dude looked like, but whatever, man. Help me with hair. <laughs> Napa with hair. You feel me? And then the other, the, the, in, the Native American, them designs were like, those designs to me were like, immaculate the choreography where goku gets hit and slides and starts running towards it that that to me is the akira of a uh, of fighting scenes where goku's fighting backwards and then the, the camera pans out that's the akira bike slide equal to because in my head when i'm doing a scene i have to remove that scene because i'm like man man this is like the perfect template before i start my fight scenes in my mind when i'm chore- mm. choreographing Everything about the the storyline was just to me was it the stakes were there the stakes were different, right? The Earth was involved in a way where it not only would be destroyed but it's going to be destroyed through what the Earth naturally does on its own, mm. give life. But you just got to give this one tree life, <laughs> <laughs> this one tree life, and the fact them boys was doing everything they can to saw it in half. They're like, yo, you got to go. Yeah, and them not succeeding, then, um, then it's going like yeah. I, I understand when Goku when when Goku had to finish them boys off, that was lame. Yeah, um, you know that yeah. was that was super lame because I wanted I wanted everybody to get their victory. Um, uh, oh, I'm sorry, kid. Yo, Piccolo, dog. That's not, why I never gave was, Piccolo. Yeah. I never, when Piccolo's talking trash to Vegeta, in my head, I said, kid, if this was a battle rap, I would have brought that up. I would have told Vegeta, listen, when Turles, when you, when you was talking to Turles, bro, <laughs> you was looking, <laughs> you, was, you was looking like, you, 
Had you was looking like John had Kent, this, dog. Had the <laughs> you was looking like Superman's dad, dog. The, the hurricane took him, dog, bro. Listen, man. Yo, and then the fight when Turles actually ate the fruit. I said, yo, it's it's done. It's done. And once again, no color palettes. No color except palettes. Except Kaoken. Except Kaoken. Yeah. Mm. Back to back to when he was fighting Gohan. I'm like, yo, this has got to be Goku's twin brother. That's fire. Goku, mm. you got a twin brother? That's that's like you you answer people's burning desire to see an evil Goku. Now you have him. Yeah. And his design, his skin, his his Saiyan armor. My favorite Saiyan armor. Because it's so him, right? It's so I'm such a Conan the Barbarian. I'm not gonna wear like trunks, I'm gonna wear tights. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It just mm. I'm raw. I'm like more I'm na- I'm more predatorial than than you know than, what? Um, you know what Jordan, you brought up a you... very valid point about a twin brother. I didn't even think about that. Imagine like, you know, he got a call from Raditz. Oh, I finally found Kakarot. I'm gonna go check it out. But then he's so many light years away that that journey took that amount of time. And Yes, mm. and not only that, but Turles, Turles is 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 Goku. He, the way he approaches things is like his carelessness, almost. You know, and he's just like, hmm, "I'm here. What are you gonna do about it, bully Goku?" And and and, and, uh, and, and that's why I, I I I I enjoy Goku Black. I like what he brought to Super, but it would for 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 you know like I liked it. I like, like all right. Th- my point about I, that. I, I, um, here's what I would have done with Goku yeah, Black, go right? Goku Black would have been a female. Goku Black would have been a Gohan. Female. It was me. It, but, yeah. it, no, that's my second option. It would have been mm. an evil Gohan. That's my second option. Mm-hmm. But it wouldn't have been a female. Pink Super Saiyan hair. Boom. Now you have you bring relevance to female say a female Saiyans with pink hair. Now you have your Morgana of the Dragon Ball Z universe, mm. a- and you go on from there. That's to me character design wise. This is what I would have done. Um, to be honest, you know, the, it would have been the Gohan idea, or he could have just stayed a Kai. Because I actually did like the idea of a Kai who went okay, crazy. an evil Kai. Yeah, I would have taken, taken that. I would have taken that too. I so now taken you could have really showed me the full abilities of what is a Kai capable of. But Tim, you don't feel like they they, they kind of corrected that when they made him fuse Zamasu because he doesn't look like Goku Black at that point. He looks like Zamasu with just Super Saiyan hair. Like he yeah. still looks Kai ish. Yeah, and but that's why I turning felt into like the when monster. He did that, like that's why I felt like when he did that, it. it was kind of redundant. Like mm-hmm. it, it really was like because to me, like I felt like it should have been Gohan because first of all, when let's just say, all right, when he fuses with Zamasu, he gets a Kai looking arm because I felt like it should have been the design of future Gohan, mm-hmm. the that exact design of future Gohan, like has the scar and everything. But, but now you making sense, Tim, and you know what I'm saying. This is your logic. <laughs> well, remember, like I said it's, in the chat, it's, we, it's a gold brick. We're not allowed to it's disagree with Toriyama, right? Toriyama knows all. It's a golden Rest brick. Rest in peace, respectfully. You, you feel me? Right? So <laughs> your logic, your logic is the golden brick, but they don't want gold <laughs> bricks, right? They don't want gold bricks. But yeah, that's what I would have done. The Tree of Might, the Tree of Might, is my favorite movie, man. Um, it's my favorite movie because just. Just a, a a lot of it speaks to my artist's desires of having because I believe a great character design will make your your great story perfect. Every the music has to be in place. It's not just one thing when I play a video game or when I play a movie. The reason why this is a ten is because it's it's the perfect solar system. You know what I'm saying? It brings life to whatever planet it's on. Mm. Digimon season is perfect to me. <laughs> Where my uh my movie, that that right there, that Saturday morning, it will always be on my mind. Why? Because it was perfect. It wasn't the imperfectness makes it even more perfect. That's what's so beautiful about it. You get what I'm saying? It's it's just that. And that's why I I love the tree of might. I like the fact that yo, there's fruit out there. That'll make you, you know, even more powerful. Mm-hmm. One piece. 
he he's admitted yeah, that he admitted that, <laughs> that Dragon Ball inspired him. Like, come on, now, yeah, bro. We, we, we know me. we know who the the Godfather. So of let's, anime. let's not let, let's let's see <laughs> some of respect these back on Toriyama. <laughs> yeah, so 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 yeah, man. That that thing to me is like, what if he ate two fruits, three fruits, four fruits? He does. And and another thing that kind of bothered me, I'm like, yo, if they do that to every planet, bro, why why are you not strong? <laughs> But see, that's the thing. I thought, all right, a good story element that could have added was, all right, they know that if they ever want to take down Frieza one day, this is what they do. They go from planet to planet to harvest until, because remember at that point, nobody really knew how strong Frieza was because Mm -hmm. remember, he never showed his final form. Mm-hmm. So it's the the level of power scaling you just don't know. So if you want to take on his full army, and that includes Zarbon, Dadoria, Kui, and then the Ginyu Force, force and after the, that, mm-hmm. and, and then it's them, and then of course you know the father, King Cold, and the beloved child we would like to see again. Mm. Yeah, yeah, so, he would have had problems. So oh the base, goodness. the basis of the I tree of life makes bro. sense. A lot but of yeah, yeah. It's just yeah, like okay. well, the execution was just a bit wonky because I get it, bro. This is a movie. They only probably got like an hour and 20 minutes to really to explain all of this. It. Yeah. But it's just like, bro, there's so many, excuse me, easy connections. Like the whole rainforest um, burning out. You could have skipped that. You could skip that, bro. To be fair, yes. I, it, and the thing that makes it even crazier is that yeah, the rainforest thing happened, right? It catches on fire. They wish they have Shenron put it back. Only for the rainforest to shrivel right back up when the tree of Mike gets planted. I'm like, was like bro. what was the point? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, no wonder the shadow dragon came, bro, because y'all was just doing, y'all was just doing whatever, bro. This man, you know, we don't want to replant this ourselves. Hey, Shenron, you, you know, mind uh, hitting the rewind know, button real quick? And, and you know, I, I hate the fact that, dog, yo, yo, y'all doing too many wishes, bro. So we showing up, we about to wreak havoc, dog. The, the Dragon Balls have a contingency plan, and y'all, <laughs> y'all squander. Yeah, now I'm getting hot, man. Y'all, yeah. squ- but I like. And to be honest with you, that's one of the best finishes in Dragon Ball Z, because Turles got killed by the his was very, off. Yeah, very creation. You feel me? It's definitely and, unique for sure. Like, yeah, and him going through the tree. No, bro, yeah, like, have y'all seen the screenplay of how it happens? Like when Goku, when the spear bomb launches for Goku's hand, Turles's scouter breaks. Breaks, yeah. And like, you can see Goku's hands twitching, like when he's getting ready. Like it's a legit a standoff. Like they're literally just staring each other down, and he like it cracks. Turles fires, and then Goku fires, and it's just. And I like the, 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 the first, the first stage. And I, no, to be honest, and I always love the first stage of the spirit bomb the best, where like when it hits you, it kind of does like a lightning javelin to the sky. Mm-hmm. I always love that up. version. Like yes, the you know the. Bag the for the nuke. energy version <laughs> is gonna always be cynic, but I love that first version, man. Mm. It just has such a classical feel to it. Yeah. The 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 um yeah, man. That to me, man, is uh it, that's why it's my one of my favorite movies. Um it's it's that and we'll get to the other ones. It's that in between and between, you know, another one I'm not gonna reveal yet. I'll keep that as a surprise, yeah. but that right there, as far as top three, that's definitely on in, in the list. Like, I don't see that's, what else personally will top that because for me, you do you do too many things for me as a little kid when I was watching. I say, yo, Goku has a twin brother. He has a team. You have a team. But y'all not, y'all don't purposely train. He purposely does. Mm. So you can see the differences in like the okay, I'm more mon- I'm I'm careless just like you, Goku, but I'm a little bit more tactical, right, with my carelessness. And that's like I like that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mm-hmm. like that. And uh yeah, and it's just it just hits different, man. His color palette. And his color palette wasn't even that that um It was very noticeable. Stoic. It was but very, it's stoic. very stoic, but it's like He's not. He's not stoic. He's very colorful. Turles is a very colorful guy, but just a villain, you know? He's not like, yeah. You know, it's not uh, It's not dry Goku, Goku level four. It's, oh, yeah, oh, man, look, you got some fight in you, kid. I like that. Mm. Some some Bandit Keith energy, man. That's what I want to say, dog. <laughs> he had the perfect amount of Bandit Keith energy. Mm. And um, just, you know, 
yeah, I, that's that's all I could say, man. Everything about that, man, the the choreography. Listen, I'm I'm a when you make your characters interesting, like the side villains, you win. Because I remember, you know what I'm saying? We that's remember true. them. That's true. I will say we my remember. pushback to in agreement with Tim is like, I don't think that the Z fighters did enough for the henchmen to matter in the grander scheme of things. Gotcha. Because yeah. they, they get they they get bodied so quickly <laughs> that I'm just like, bro, what? Budget, budget, budget. No, budget. you no, you're right. But I'm sure runtime, yeah. everything had like a part to play. Like I'm sure there was a lot of things that like factored into it. But I'm like, but then what was the point of everyone splitting up? If not even five seconds later, Yamcha is out for the rest of the movie. You know, it's just like, bro, like what? Why did you even bother? Why do you even bother? Just like everyone is, hey, rally behind Goku. Now I will say, in like to 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 like I guess like soften that a little bit. I did like towards the end when Goku's trying to do the spirit bomb the first time and they're trying to buy him time. So they're all like rushing Turles and Turles is one shotting everybody. I'm like, that's I'm a sucker for that. Like even when they did that in the Cell games where everyone's trying to hold off Cell in the anime, so Gohan could like push back. It gets me every time, bro. I, it is something about like. Y'all know Team y'all are not going to win, but <laughs> yeah. push them back as long as you can. Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? The, like, the, the Yamcha try beam. Yeah, yeah, man. yeah. That, yeah. Was, like that, that kind was of thing. Moments. I'm just like, I like yeah. that type of stuff of like, okay, let's just do what we can to help buy time. Like, I like that type of energy. But it was just like, it just took away from the henchmen for me. Because like you said, to your point, Spring, like they were so visually interesting that I wanted them to do more. Like... You know what I'm saying? Like Krillin throws a destructive disc, and you, this big man who I did not expect to start spinning like a top spins like a top, chucks a blade that deflects it. Just I'm like, bro, what? Like, what else can he do? I don't know because Krillin <laughs> is not Krillin's mad, unconscious. Right? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> not Krillin's unconscious. I'm like, no. Oh my gosh, it's, it's infuriating, but then, man. Guess who defeats the Ginyu Force and and on King Guy's planet? These same people. I'm like. <laughs> yeah, but it, it goes to the whole thing that's always been an issue with Dragon Ball, right? Like, what, what are power levels really? What are power levels really, right? It, it's just, it's... Oh, come on, don't say it like that, dog. Don't say it like What's that. What's a power man? level in, 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 in comparison like to the that, plot? Right? Jeez, so, dog. to me, it's like that's, that's always been like my knock on the tree of my. I'm like, it was right there. <laughs> like, the storyboard was right there. The Z Fighters all square off. Yeah, they all so, have a little different elements. You know, and it's that's, just like, and yeah, that's a nine, man. Nothing. It's a nine, man. <laughs> it's a nine. Is a nine for okay. me. Yeah, it's a nine point five. I'll Tim, what do you give it? I give it an eight still. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, it's like, bro, I still I like. I want to know who Goku Black is. Mm. Like, the original now, Goku cause now, Black. Because now, because now, yeah. now, um, you know, Joy with the twins. I was like, bro, that twin story actually does pretty stick. It does. Mm. Yin and Yang, Tiger. Oh, he he got Dragon. he got a tra- he got a transmission from Raditz. Uh, he said he'll follow up when he can. Oh, I found out Raditz is dead. Oh, I found out Vegeta and Nappa had a little issue. I'm like, all right, let me go check this out. Because, mm. like yeah. I said, bro, that scene with him and Gohan is like this feels like an uncle taunting his nephew. Mm-hmm. I was like, bro, like, bro, there's so much more they're gonna do. With you this. got girls? You ain't got no girls, little boy. What you talking? You got no girls? <laughs> oh, you, you, you wiping wipe the dog? Who you out his mouth? <laughs> oh, you think you can fight? You can't fight, little boy. Come on. <laughs> I used to beat your dad up when we were kids. <laughs> Get out of here, <laughs> man. I, I heard you ran into a little problem. <laughs> Why don't you come back to see me at twelve o'clock, man? We are gonna talk about that. That's yeah. Nice uh, yeah. I, right, like. To me, I feel like I'm not as big of a fan of Tree of Might as like you guys are. It's probably like a seven and a half out of ten for me. Okay. Only because a lot of those things you guys said, the things that are left on the table, I just found so frustrating, even as a kid. Right? I'm just like, there were just so many things I'm like, that that's it? Like, yeah, that's all that happened. Yeah. Like, wh- yeah. what? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, yo, I have it. No, I have it. Yo, I'm, I'm like, I'm like that. That was it. Hey, that's like it? even that's it. F, F, that's yeah, it. yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Saturday mm-hmm. morning, about throw my cereal. Like what? Like yeah, yeah. Even man. the whole thing when like he turns, stuff. yeah, when he turns Gohan to an ape and like Goku's using the Kelkin to run from Gohan. Like I've never seen the ape move that fast, bro. Never. Like Goku's hitting, <clears throat> it's like trying to reason with Gohan and try to hit the dash and Gohan's just, like it just there was just so many things. I'm like. Yeah, right. it made me like, yo, Gohan is a problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it goes, 
nowhere. 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 I would have even liked if like maybe it took Trailers one more fruit to like overpower Goku. He just eats one and it's just it becomes so one sided. Granted, again, <laughs> cinematography becomes a one. That one shot where he hits Goku down and you just see like the bullets falling and then one hits Goku and land. I'm like, beautiful, beautiful. But it's just, bro, you're done. <laughs> just get your hands in the air from now. It's you're done. It's it's over. <laughs> he got he got you. Yeah. He got you, my boy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, that comes to a conclusion for our first uh part of our reviews of the Dragon Ball movies, the first three. Dead Zone, uh, World Strongest, and Tree of Might. Thank you guys for listening, tuning in. Next time, obviously, we will be covering the the next. Well, I think we should do the next four, just because one of them is technically a sequel in itself. So mm. the next one will be Lord Slug, Cooler, the Return of Cooler, <laughs> and then Super Android Thirteen. So make sure if you're watching on YouTube to like, comment, subscribe. Um, Give us a comment. Give us some feedback. Tell us what you uh, want us to cover next in this next installment or in future installments. And once again, thank you for tuning in for the Press Start Podcast. Press Start Select Podcast. I am Antonius the Gamer, Kel Smith, Super SSS Rank. See you guys next time.